People often ask, does gluten make you fat? Does gluten make you gain weight? It absolutely does. But to truly understand these issues, I would urge you to get rid of many conventional notions of how weight gain is caused and how weight loss is achieved. For one, cutting calories is a terrible way to lose weight. One, it's misery, right? You're hungry all the time. You're always thinking about food. Two, it does work in the short term, but you're booby trapped in the long term. We saw this in the studies that uh, derived from the Biggest Loser TV show. Remember that? So these people would enter the program very overweight and then engage in a calorie limited diet and extreme exercise. And they would lose weight. They'd lose a lot of weight, in fact, 30, 50, 70, 100, 130 pounds, right? Virtually every single one of them regained the weight after the show was over, even though the majority of them maintained a very strict low calorie diet of around 1,200, 1,400 calories, that range, and at least a moderate exercise program. When these people were actually studied, they proved to have very low metabolic rates, basal metabolic rates of about 25% less than normal. In other words, they regained all the weight they lost despite exercise and maintaining the calorie restriction. And another thing that adds to that is when you lose weight, a lot of the weight lost is muscle weight. And when you regain the weight, it's virtually all fat weight. And it makes you even more, uh, it makes it even more difficult to lose that weight again. <clears throat> so cutting calories is a terrible way to lose weight. There's also now new evidence over the last several years that cutting calories as well as cutting fat or cutting both leads to gallstone formation that can uh, 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 develop very rapidly, even in the first four weeks. This has been shown by studies in which uh, gallbladder ultrasounds were performed at the baseline, at the start of a diet, uh, and people chosen to have no gallstones at the start, and then that ultrasound repeated at four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. An astounding number of people develop gallstones, even in the first four weeks, and more so over a longer time period, if they cut their calories and or cut their fat. So cutting calories is an awful way to lose weight. Back to gluten. Well, gluten is really a two-part molecule. There's two parts, gliadin, a globular protein, and glutenin, a linear polymeric or long chain protein. That's the stuff, the glutenin is what gives uh, dough, wheat dough, that kind of stretchiness, uh, or viscoelasticity, but it's the gliadin that is the source of most of the problems. Gliadin is not very uh, digestible by humans. So while if you eat a pork chop or eat an egg, you break those proteins down to single amino acids, that's how proteins are supposed to be digested, the gliadin protein being the, a component of the seeds of grasses, and humans don't have the enzymes that to break down the proteins in the seeds of grasses. So the gliadin is broken down into peptides or fragments that are about four or five amino acids long. And those peptides are very unique in that they cross the blood-brain barrier and go to your brain's opiate receptors. And there they stimulate appetite. So anybody who consumes wheat or related grains like rye and barley and corn are exposed to gliadin-derived opioid peptides that are very potent appetite stimulants. And that's why people who consume grains typically eat breakfast, say, of a bowl of breakfast cereal or um, uh, let's say some a bagel or whole wheat toast or whatever. At 7 a.m., they're hungry by 8.30 or 9, have to have a snack, have some kind of a grain-based snack. They're hungry again by 10, 30, 11. This is continual nagging hunger. You're never satisfied. That's why people who eat a big bowl of pasta till they're bursting full are still hungry, even though their stomach is bursting full. So that's the gliadin derived opioid peptide appetite stimulation effect. And it is enormously effective for gaining weight. Another reason why uh, gluten can cause weight gain is because gluten occurs in the company of other components in wheat and related grains, such as the amylopectin A carbohydrate, or what we call a super carbohydrate. Amylopectin A is uniquely and highly digestible in the human body. And that's why, unlike many of the proteins that are indigestible or only partially digestible, the amylopectin A is, in contrast, very digestible. And it raises blood sugar higher and faster than sucrose, than table sugar. And so when you consume anything, grains, uh, made of grains that contains the amylopectin A, blood sugar ranges very high. Well, when blood sugar goes high, so does insulin. 
And when insulin goes high, it causes fat growth, fat deposition, and it inhibits or blocks mobilization of fat energy. So that rise in insulin triggers weight gain and over time insulin resistance, which spirals into even greater weight gain. That rise in blood sugar is followed 90 to 120 minutes later by a drop in blood sugar. So the hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, is followed by hypoglycemia in many people, that is low blood sugar. So, so consumption of grains, because of its extravagant capacity to raise blood sugar and insulin, is typically followed about 90 to 120 minutes later by an hypoglycemic episode. And that's when you feel kind of foggy, mentally foggy and tired and crabby, and you have intense cravings for food. That combination of hypoglycemia and the glide and drive opioid peptide effect act together to enormously fuel appetite. And that's why people who consume grains find it very, very difficult to control appetite and lose weight. Another reason why gluten uh, causes weight gain is because gluten also occurs with numerous components in wheat and grains that trigger inflammation. So that gliadin protein is very inflammatory. Gliadin derived opioid peptides, very inflammatory. Uh, there's something called wheat germ agglutinin in wheat and related grains that is also extremely inflammatory, both to the intestinal lining as it passes through the intestinal tract because wheat germ agglutinin is completely indigestible. It's completely unchanged as it, it goes in intact and comes out the other end intact. But in its course from mouth to anus, it is extremely inflammatory. A little bit does get into the bloodstream where it is intensely inflammatory. And many people actually have antibodies against wheat germ agglutinin, uh, reflecting the fact that this thing gets into your bloodstream and it is very, very inflammatory. Well, when you're inflamed by those, by those components and other components, there are other factors in wheat and grains that cause inflammation, you cause water retention, water weight gain. You also amplify resistance to insulin, which further spirals into weight gain or prevention of weight loss. So put that all together. Glide and derived opioid peptides that drive appetite, the capacity for amylopectin A, the super carbohydrate grains to provoke rises in glucose and then insulin and causes hypoglycemia and insulin resistance. And the inflammatory consequences of gluten containing uh, grains add it up all together and you have foods, wheat and grains, that are enormously effective for causing weight gain. And I don't mean muscle gain, I don't mean lean tissue gain, I mean fat gain, specifically visceral fat most of all. That's the inflammatory fat that lives in the abdomen and circles your organs, but you can see it on the surface re reflected by such things as love handles or muffin top. So uh, gluten and it, the company it keeps in wheat and grains is enormously effective for causing weight gain. So much so I call wheat and grains perfect obesogens. That is foods perfectly crafted to cause weight gain. Well, it's kind of scary, but you know what? Once you recognize this and you take the step as we do in my wheat belly lifestyle, my undoctored lifestyle, uh, as detailed in my books, my YouTube uh, channel, and my wheat belly blog and undoctored blog, you start to realize just how powerful this effect can be when we banish all wheat and grains from the diet and weight falls off you. I've had many people say, I, I'm scared how fast I'm losing weight. It's not uncommon to lose five pounds in the first week. Now, not all that weight, by the way, is fat. Some of it's fat, maybe three pounds of it's fat, but some of that weight is also inflammatory water loss. Okay, you're losing inflammation and you start to lose that. We, we say you diurese that water. So now there are some precautions to take when you do this because weight loss can be very rapid and certain things happen. For instance, you stop retaining salt and water. So one of the things we have to do in this first week or so when we go wheat and grain free and deal with the opioid withdrawal syndrome and other phenomena, you have to overhydrate and you have to salt your food contrary to common wisdom about uh, limiting so sodium and salt. So I've had people actually pass out in the early years when we started uh, eliminating all wheat and grains. So you'll find this all detailed, all the steps you can take for your safety 
so that you don't have funny things happen like passing out when you go wheat and grain free. But know that going wheat and grain free is one of the most magnificently effective strategies there are for weight loss.